Good morning. I'm so excited about today's project. It is based on the Rolling Stones lips. And we are going to use the viewfinder and our proportion divider in order to make this image bigger on a piece of mixed media paper. So let's get started. Go ahead and take out a piece of mixed media paper. And you'll want to open your sketchbook to the page that shows you the chart for your proportion divider. The first thing that we need to do is to make a grid on our mixed media paper that is the same proportion and proportionately bigger than our viewfinder. We're going to end up putting our lips underneath the viewfinder and then transposing it onto our gridded mixed media paper. So we know that we have one, two, three boxes across the top and one, two, three, four boxes along the side. So the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to take our proportion divider and we are going to use it in order to make tick marks that are perfectly evenly spaced um, a third of the way across the top of our page. So we are going to place the purple button one, two, three, four circles up from the small legs. So we'll go ahead and move them one, two, three, four up from the small legs and secure that button with our little sliding lock. Now we should be able to take our long legs and put one point in the corner of the top of our page and the other in the other corner. And remember, it's, the more accurate you are with these little points, the more you can depend on the grid. So accuracy is important. Okay, if we have perfectly um, top corner, top corner, then I'm not going to touch both of the legs. I'm just going to touch one leg and then I'm going to tip my divider up and with my pencil, I'm going to give myself a little tiny mark where my short leg is in the corner and the other short leg is indicating a third um, distance across and then I move my divider over and I find another third distance across move my divider over and it should be a third a third a third since the top of my page is the same width as the bottom of my page without shifting my hand without changing the uh, length of my dividers I should be able to just shift the whole thing down to the bottom, start in the left corner, give myself a little tick mark where the right leg is, shift it over, mark my third, and then shift it over to double check and it should be a third, a third, a third. If I did it right, I should be able to take the straight edge of my uh, mixed media paper or any straight edge that you have and go ahead and very lightly you want it to be so light that not even your neighbor can see the line that you make super super light use anything that you have that's a straight edge make a super super light straight line you want to be able to erase these really easily if we did it right, we should have three even columns all the way across. Now my grid finder, my viewfinder has one, two, three, four squares. So I'm going to change my viewfinder to find quarters. Because then it'll give me one, two, three, four even segments. And quarters looks like it is one, two, three circles up from my short leg. So, pop out my lock, move my button so that it is at one, two, three 
and then open up the legs let my legs find the top corner and the bottom corner and just make sure that you're only holding on to one leg when you lay it down it is corner to corner you keep having having to check and then make your adjustments so that it's truly corner to corner now without um, adjusting the legs i'm just going to flip over my viewfinder i'm going to start at the top and i should be able to give myself a little tick mark move down give myself a little measured tick mark and if i was super careful and i did a really good job it should be exactly four smaller segments to the side I'm gonna do the same thing, and I'm going to start at the top again. Give myself a little tick mark. Give myself a little tick mark. Give myself a little tick mark. And it should be that the leftover space is a quarter. Okay, making progress. Take your, anything that's straight, Lay it down, super light. I'm using my B or HB pencil. Super light, so light that you can erase it without leaving any marks behind. All right, so now is the time to look at the grid and see if, it's, if it looks like it's really square. If it doesn't, you want to fix it. You want to fix it before you get too far. I can put my lips, my Rolling Stone lips. I'm going to tape it to the back of my viewfinder. Try to center it as well as I can. Taping it just keeps it from moving around on me because I don't want it to shift on that grid. Okay, the first thing that we're going to do is to give ourselves really light numbers in our boxes. One, two, three. Remember these are going to be erased. So they're super, super light. 10, 11, 12. That'll help me not get lost and accidentally work in the wrong box. So I'm going to do my tick marks and I know from my uh, proportion divider cheat sheet here that in order to get halves, I want to move my button to one, two, three, four, five, six, the sixth hole. So move it to one, two, three, four, five, six. The sixth hole. Measure. Any one of my squares along the top, corner to corner, make sure it's corner to corner. And then my bottom um, should indicate halfway. And it looks like it does. Again, these are just temporary lines. So the lighter that you can make them, the better. And let's see. And then it should be the same for the height of each box. And then when we turn it around, it should give us the little halfway marks. You might be able to get away with eyeballing these, 
um, but the more accurate it is, your grid is, the more accurate your end image is going to be. And our goal is to make these lips just perfectly proportioned. The first thing that we're going to do is start in box number one. This is box number one. And we're gonna give ourselves um, a little tick mark where the um, line of the lip crosses over the grid. So halfway between the bottom right corner and the tick mark. Halfway between the bottom right corner and the tick is here, so that's where that lip is going to cross. And we're going to find out where it crosses this grid it's halfway between the bottom right corner and maybe it's more than halfway. Maybe it's a th two thirds of the way up toward the tick mark. So one third, two thirds, maybe it's here. I think that's about right. And then we're going to very lightly sketch that in. Going on to the number two box. These lips make a big heart shape we know where it crosses from the one to the two, but where does it cross between from the two to the three? It looks like it's just under the tick mark, which is right here. Where it comes down almost is shooting for the middle. So we can kind of lay it in nice and soft. You can do sketchy lines if you're more comfortable with that shorter, sketchier lines sometimes helps us to get um, our shapes in the right place. Just looking as, as well as we can at those lips. Now in the third box, the profile line comes down and does this kind of like slippery slide curve and it ends up crossing the grid line um, if this is halfway, then maybe three quarters of the way toward the tick. So between the bottom left corner and the tick, it's maybe about there. And it does this slippery slide. Maybe it even comes up a little bit more. Kind of does this slippery slide. Down like this. This is, I think, pretty good. Now it's going to swoop out and where it turns after the swoop and starts swooping the other way is right at about the halfway mark, right at about the tick mark. And then it swoops down and it crosses from the six into the nine, just to the left of the tick mark. So just to the left of the tick mark. And where it comes out here, if I were to draw a guideline up, it would be about halfway between the tick mark and the edge. So it's going to be around here. Swoop down. Now you might be saying, oh my goodness, this takes so long. Can't I just draw it? And you can, you definitely can. There are times when proportions are super important. And in this case, reproducing a very recognizable um, image like these lips, we want the proportions to be as close to perfect as possible. Okay, so we're in the nine box, and this is the nine box, and the line's going to swoop down and across, and it crosses from the nine into the eight, halfway between the tick mark and the bottom corner. Halfway between the tick mark and the bottom corner. go. Now it's going to cross through the eight box and it meets the grid line between the eight and the 11 box about halfway between the tick mark and the bottom right hand corner. Halfway between the tick mark and the bottom right corner. Keep it light, keep it sketchy, keep it easy to erase. It's going to come down just a little bit 
and then stops. Let's go ahead and finish this part of the loops. So if we go to box number one and look below that where we left off from the lips, box number four has the lips crossing the guideline, coming out and then turning in, in alignment with the halfway tick mark turning and then coming back down right at the tick mark. So let's see, it comes right down at the tick mark. And it's, if I were to make a guideline, then it, the guideline would be like halfway between the tick mark and the corner. So tick mark corner, halfway. And just along this tick mark is where the corner of that mouth is. So it's gonna come out here and it's going to turn around and then come back. Keep it really light so that you can make little adjustments, make it as light as you can. Okay, let's go ahead and get the big tongue in there and then we'll come back and put in the top lip. So the tongue is going to start, this is convenient, in the four box right along the right hand side at the tick mark so this is the four box this is the tick mark and it's going to come down curving slightly out and cross from the four into the seven just left of the tick mark which is right here so something like that nice and light it's going to come down in the seven and it's going to curve out and then around and it crosses from the seven into the 10, halfway between the bottom left corner and the tick mark, halfway between the bottom left corner and the tick mark. It's always helpful to know where you're starting and where you're ending as it relates to the grid. Now, we know we, where we start. We're going to follow that line and it ends or it crosses the grid between the 10 and the 11, right at the halfway. Okay. Now it's, we know where it starts in the 11 box. Where does it end in the 10 box? Just to the right of the tick mark along the top. And it's going to curve out. Okay, now where does it go? It swoops up through the eight box, swoops up and it ends right in the corner of the eight box. So it ends right in the corner of the eight box. Okay, now it crosses into the six box and it comes up at like almost a perfect diagonal and stops almost right in the center of the box. So, this is the center of the box. It comes up, stops right center of the box. Let's go ahead and follow this line around. So it's going to do this like backward slide thing. We know where it starts, where does it stop? About halfway between the top corner and the tick mark halfway between the top corner and the tick mark. Something like that. Okay. Now it does this kind of lazy heart shape, kind of like a roller coaster. We know where it starts between the six and the five. It leaves the five, goes into the four, um, about halfway between the corner and the tick mark, maybe a third, maybe a third of the way down. 
So if this is one third, two thirds, three thirds, then it might be here. And just now that you know where it starts and where it stops, just like look at that shape and see if you can sketch it in place. And then this line comes down and it is almost exactly in the middle of the box. So if I was to draw really like guideline, this is the middle of the box. Now it turns and it comes down, not quite. If I put my pencil down, it's not quite angled toward this corner. It's so angled more kind of toward the bottom. So not quite here, but maybe here. With proportions and with the grid, it's all about how shapes relate to each other. All right, let's put in the teeth and then this shape, which is part of the tongue. So the teeth are pretty complicated. We're gonna start in the furthest left box and see how where it crosses the grid from the four box to the five box. It's, if this is our tick mark, it's maybe, I don't know, like three quarters of the way from the top right corner to the uh, tick mark, which here's the tick mark three quarters of the way down, something like that. And it hooks up, hooks up and over. Remember all of our shapes are like two and a half, almost three times bigger because our paper is bigger and our grid is bigger. So keep that in mind when you're making these shapes. All right, and then it has one, two, Three teeth. Let's go ahead and put this one in and then we'll put the two in the middle. So this one crosses between the five and the six box right at the tick mark. And part of it is in the five and part of it is in the six. So part of it is in the five and part of it is in the six. And it is going to feel two and a half times bigger. That curve is going to be two and a half times bigger and it's going to meet the, the lip over here. Now we have this kind of like W or wave shape and we know where it starts and we know where it ends. So the middle happens to be just above the middle of the box. So it's about in here. So this is pretty tricky, not just because it's a complex shape, but because it's kind of floating in the middle of some boxes and it doesn't have but two um, locations on your grid to compare. So do the best that you can. Keep looking back and forth. Remember that you're drawing this two and a half to three times bigger than the original. So all of those shapes are going to be bigger. Let's go ahead and draw this shadow in. We know that it starts right uh, where the four and the five box meet at the tick mark. And it curves down and comes back up into the middle of this tooth, which is right here. So down and up into the middle of that tooth. We're just comparing, now we can compare to objects that we have as well as the, uh, as well as the grid. And then this center, this is just a shadow that's indicating the tongue shape. And it comes off of basically the middle of the teeth here. And it comes down and crosses just uh, in the top left corner of the eight box, which is here. And it comes down and it stops um, in the seven box, uh, just to the left of the tick mark which is about here. So that's gonna come like that. And it's skinny at the very end and then it gets fatter. 
Oops, maybe I made it too fat. Okay, still feels a little too fat, doesn't it? Good thing I have my eraser. All right, that seems pretty good. Uh, okay, we just have four more shapes. Let's look at the ones that cross the grid. So here's one that is going to be partly in the five box, go through the four box, and down into the seven box. I'm gonna let you work out those details. Walk your way through it. The more patient you can be, the more accurate. Take your time. There's no rush. Remember that this big floating shape is going to be two and a half times bigger on your drawing than it is on the photocopy. Then this, this is the, these are highlights where the um, tongue is kind of damp or wet and it makes highlights. So we can mark where this one starts. It starts in the five box, goes into the eight box and all the way down here into the 11. The, in the 11 the box, it's just to the left of the tick mark. All the way up here, all the way through the eight, all the way up and touches the six. Hands back, I'm just comparing. You can do this on your own. You're practically an expert at this now. Go really slow. These highlights here, this one crosses between the two and the three box. And I'm just comparing them to the size of the lips where it crosses and the grid. And this one, is it just me or are they kind of the shape of like a painter's paint palette or a kidney bean? Kind of both. All right. So now it's time to use our um, either Sharpies, if you would rather use your Sharpies, I'm going to be using my large, medium, and small brush pens because I love them. I'm going to start with the large course before you start doing any ink. Make sure you're happy with the sketch. If you feel like you need to change a line, now's the time to do it before you start to ink it. Once you're happy, with the uh, pencil sketch, then you can come back in. And I'm going super slow. Pressing down where I want it to be thicker. And sometimes spots like this come up where I had to pick up my pen and adjust my handle on it. So it's always nice to come back and just super slowly go back and kind of adjust those spots. 
I'm gonna go ahead and make his tongue with the large pen. And I'm pressing down when I want it to be thicker. And go ahead and... I'm looking at this one and it looks like it's thinner down here by the teeth. So I'm gonna go ahead and change. I change to my medium. I'm trying to get mine to be as close to the original as possible. And I'm not gonna press down too hard. So that my line weight is thinner in here, just like the original. I'm going to go ahead and go, um, uh, I think I'm going to go ahead with my medium and do the teeth. And the shadow line. And this shadow line. And I would, if it was a lot of filling in to do, I would probably use my Sharpie, but since it's just a little bit of filling in to do, I think I'll use my brush, pens, see how well this works. Just go super slow around the teeth, like super duper duper slow. You've worked so hard to get those teeth shaped just right. So it goes really slow and try to keep them as close to the sketch as possible. Going over this just so that it's super black. Now I'm using my small brush for the details. 